meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This morning we skipped from Matthew. Last week we had Matthew, right? I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. Go into all the world and make disciples. That's not just for the eleven. That's for all of us. And so we skip a little bit ahead this week. We go to Acts chapter 10, where it's a wonderful story that we actually skipped over a bunch. Clyde did a great job reading this morning, but it's kind of confusing the way that they put together the lesson. So we're going to go over the whole chapter of Acts 10 this morning. Right? We have basically a few parts. I think there's four parts to this. There's Peter's vision. First, there's Cornelius's dream slash vision slash prayer, whatever you want to call that. Then there's Peter's vision. Then there's Peter's trip. And there's this time at Cornelius' house, right, which is what we miss. Because the way that the reading went this morning, you get Cornelius' prayer that he sent people to go get Peter. He sent people to go get, when we get Peter's vision, and then the people, people got to Peter, and then Peter starts to talk. To make it sounds like Peter's talking to just the servants of Cornelius that went to go find Peter. When in actuality, that speech is given to Cornelius and all of his household. And many other people that are there. So let's take a step back. Cornelius is who? Who is he? He's a centurion, which is what? A Roman soldier. He's a Roman soldier of the Italian cohort. Italian, Italian, you say Italian, I say Italian, let's call the whole thing off. But that means what? Where does he come from? Italy. Italy, thank you. More than likely, probably somewhere close to Rome, right? So he's from the Roman Empire. He's from, actually, Italy. He's not somebody they found along the way. This is a man who came from Italy to be in Caesarea. And Caesarea is a city in Israel, with the name of Caesar. Caesarea is Caesar, right? It was Caesarea Maritime, I believe, was the actual name of the city. So this man is in charge of a group of soldiers and is now living in a town because they're there to occupy it. And in his time there being there to do that, He's become a person who is a devout follower of the Jewish God. He understands who God is. He prays to God. He gives alms. He helps out people in need. He's a devout person. He's a devout follower of God. But yet, is he a Jew? No, he's not. He's a Gentile. He's a Gentile believer, which all of us are. But in that day and time... The Jews still believed, those who were, some of the Jews still believed, you could not be a Christian unless you converted to being a Jew. We'll get to that a little later. So we get this prayer of this devout Gentile man who then sends people to go and find Peter. Send men to Joppa to go find a man named Simon, who is called Peter, who is staying at a man named Peter, who is a tanner's house next to the seaside. Say that five times fast. Right? Go find Peter, who is Simon, who is named Peter, who lives with Peter the tanner by the sea. So the men go, and at noon the next day, right? Or some translations will say in the sixth hour the next day, because of the way they told time back then, right? Peter was up on a rooftop, and he was, he was hungry, and he fell into a trance. And he saw this sheet come down out of heaven. And we talk about this a lot. This is a vision that gets a lot of airplay, or a lot of time talking about it in, the, in people like me. We spend a lot of time discussing what this means, right? This sheet comes down from heaven, and it has all kinds of animals on it. Four-footed, probably some lizards, birds, and all that kind of stuff. But what are the animals that are on it? Are they? Does it say that? Peter says that he's never eaten anything unclean. Right? But it doesn't actually tell us what's on this sheet. 
It just says this sheet is lowered down from heaven. He sees this sheet come down from heaven, and it has all kinds of animals on it. And the voice comes from heaven and says, Peter, get up, kill, and eat. And Peter says, no, no it can't be, Lord. I'm not going to do it because I've never eaten anything that's unclean. So our assumption is these are unclean animals. And what are unclean animals? A pig is unclean. I've, I've, I know I've said it in here before because bacon, you couldn't eat bacon or ham. Any sea animal that's a bottom feeder, not a fish, which means how many people like catfish? How many people like catfish? You can't eat catfish. You can't eat crab. You can't eat shrimp. You can't eat bacon wrapped shrimp. <laughs> That's an special no-no right there. Because that's, not, not only is that a bottom-feeding uh, sea creature, that's also bacon. So the bacon's right out, right? So you, uh, there's, there was animals according to the Levitical law that are unclean, that you're not supposed to eat for whatever reason. And that's our assumption of what is on this sheet as it lowers down. Because Peter says, I've never eaten anything that's unclean. But God says... You cannot call, please do not call, or you do not call anything that I've made clean, unclean, or profane. And it happens again. And it happens again. Are we sensing a pattern with Peter? <laughs> Peter three times denied Christ the night that he was crucified. And three times on the seashore, Peter was brought back into the grace, good graces of Christ. And three times this morning we see God saying to Peter, get up and kill and eat. But this sheep comes down, God says, get up, kill and eat. Peter says, no way, I have never eaten anything unclean. Don't call anything I've made clean, unclean. And then the sheep goes back. Did Peter kill and eat? We don't know, actually. I would venture to say no. Because it goes on. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Because at that point in time, the men who came from Cornelius are now at Joppa, at the gate of the house that Peter, the one known as Simon, is staying at. And Peter hears, there are people here looking for you. So he goes down and he says, who are you looking for? And they say, we're looking for you. And he says, okay, I'm going to go with you. And then Peter, along with the two servants and the soldier from Cornelius, this is where our reading ends, right? Go with them back to Caesarea, to Cornelius' house. And the next day when they get there, right? So now we're four days moving in this chapter. He says to them, as they fall to his feet to worship him. No, don't worship me. Get up. I'm just merely a man. And then he says, you, you all know that a Jew should not be in the house of a Gentile. Right? Because Jews did not associate with Gentiles. They did not go into their houses. But Peter went with the soldiers, the soldier and the servants, and went into Cornelius' house and said, Why do you want me here? Why am I here? And Cornelius said, Because God told me to send for you and to have you brought here so that we could listen to what you have to say. And that's where our reading picks back up, where Peter says, Now I know that God shows no partiality. No partiality. So my question for all of us this morning is then, who isn't welcome here? I heard the right answer. But, there's a but in there. Because there really is. If we're actually honest with ourselves, if we're honest with ourselves, there's actually people that we would not want to hear. Right? We're honest with ourselves. There are people that aren't welcome. And you know what? The first step in having those people be welcomed is saying that. Because everyone is welcome. 
according to God. Because that's what God says in this text. And God lowered that sheet down out of heaven and he told Peter to get up and kill. And he said, don't call anything I've made clean, unclean or profane. Then the sheep just went away and Peter didn't eat because God didn't say, I'm abolishing the Old Testament. God didn't say, I'm getting rid of what was. That still holds true for you. But you can't say that it doesn't belong to me. You can't say that that's not a part of my creation. You can't say that's a, not a part of what I made and what I love. That's part of what I did. If you want to keep these laws, great, do it. But you can't say just because it's excluded by the law that now it's not made for somebody else. That now it's not made for somebody else to use and to grow and to get to, to know me. That's what he says when, when all of a sudden at the end there, some of the commentators I listened to said Peter was preaching too long. Because the Holy Spirit came in and said, boom, all of you guys get to talk in tongues now because we need to get him to be quiet. <laughs> Right? I mean, that's what happened. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit came upon Cornelius and all of his household. And they started to speak in tongues. And the circumcised people that came with Peter, which are who? The Jews that came with Peter, right? Because there, was, there were people with Peter when he was at Peter's house. And some of those, it says in the reading, some of those people came with Peter to go to Cornelius's. And when they saw that, they were amazed that God would give his spirit... To, to those who are not a part of them. Right? And that's the thing that we've got to understand and we've got to watch when we start using us and them. When we start talking about them, we've already made the division. And God says, there are no divisions here. Everyone is welcome. Everyone can have my spirit. And when that happened, then Peter said, what is to prevent us from having them to be baptized? Right? What is to prevent us from having them to be baptized as we were baptized with water? So he got water and he baptized them right away. Because that's what God does. God breaks in and he takes those boxes, like I was going to do for the kids. Takes those boxes that we want to build and keep him in. And he rips the sides up and says, it's bigger than this. Because I want to include everybody. And I want you to include everybody too. Does that mean it's easy? No, it's not. But who do we always have walking with us to do this? I heard it over here. Jesus. We always have Jesus with us, right? He promised that last week. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus goes with us. To share his love, to share his, his teachings, to share the things that he's told us, to show other people how we are to live. Loving everyone and accepting them where they're at and allowing them to come and join us and then let God change them. Right? Because each one of us came seeking something. And when God found us, he changed us for the better. That's what we're supposed to do. To go and tell of his love so that others can come and be changed by God. So accept people where they're at. And show them the love that God gave to you. And in turn, God will show them the love he has for them. And this world will become the world that God created us to be.